Hello and welcome. We're Team 8 and we're going to be discussing the analysis, application, and synthesis of a four-bar mechanism. My name is Evelyn Mojica and my team members are Kyra Sanchez and Michelle Dennison. Next slide, please. So to begin with, we're going to do the analysis of the four-bar slider crank mechanism, which you can see on the right figure. And an example of this mechanism, you can see it in internal combustion engines as well as the wheels on a train pictured here on the bottom left. That's right. For this mechanism, we're going to begin with doing a position analysis. These were, to the left, these were the given parameters. And the unknowns, which is what we will be solving for, are on the right, which is R1 and theta 3. The continuation of this position analysis is as follows. There's two closures of the mechanism because in the equation that we're using for R1, under the radical, the, the solution under the radical, excuse me, is positive. So we will have two possible solutions for this equation, giving us two closures for the mechanism. And one, one value of theta 3 for each closure. These were the equations used to solve for theta 1, and once having solved for, excuse me, for R1, and once having solved for R1, plugged in to solve for theta 3. With these two values, we can move on to solving for the position of the joints Q and P. So this is a sample uh, table of the data that we were able to gather. There were many points because we took uh, the position of the mechanism varying theta 2 from 0 to 60 degrees. As there were so many points, it's not feasible to fit it all in one slide, so I took samples of the tables of the data to uh, show this result. So as, for example, in the first table, as theta 2 is varied from 51 to 60, you can see for the first closure, the values that were uh, obtained for R1 and theta 3. Table, the second table on this slide shows the exact same thing, except it's for closure 2, from theta 2 varied from 0 to 10 degrees. And in the end, we solved for the position of the joints Q and P, where, as it can be seen on this bottom table, the two positions for closure 1 and 2 for joint P in the I and J direction, and for joint Q in the I and J direction. Next, we solved for the position of point S on the coupler curve. For this, we used theta S is equal to 30 degrees, and we solved for the position X and Y by using the top two equations as pictured here, and R Q S was equal to 25 inches. Again, this is a table depicting the sample data where it shows the position of the coupler link S in X and Y, when theta 2 is varied from 0 to 10 degrees. Next, Ms. Dennison will come up to continue with the velocity acceleration analysis, as well as this, the uh, uh, animation of our mechanism. The velocity and acceleration analysis was found by using the velocity and acceleration equations and plugging in the values previously found for theta 2 dot, theta 3 dot, and theta 2 double dot. Here are some data points for the joint velocity for theta 2 from theta equals 0 to 10 degrees, and also the joint acceleration for theta 2 from 0 to 10 degrees. The sample data is for points P and Q. Here you can see they're depicted. This data is on a graph for RQ and RP in the I and J direction. And here are the acceleration graphs in the I and J direction. Again, RQ is in blue and RP is in orange. And here's a simulation of this data. As you can see, when link 2 rotates, the slider moves. This causes the wheel to spin like a locomotive. And now Kyra is going to talk about the synthesis. So for our second part of our project, we were supposed to synthesize a four-bar mechanism given the coordinates for three different positions as depicted here. The coordinates for, were for our coupler link, AB, and we had to make sure that they all passed through the required positions in the right order. 
we were allowed to optimize these coordinates by changing one coordinate by one or minus one inch. After we were done, we would need to, to apply this to a realistic application. So to begin, we synthesized this mechanism, first finding polar of A and polar B. These are the equations that were given to us, and by plugging in all the values that we were given for both all three coordinates, we found that polar A was exactly at the origin of 0, 0, and polar B was 14.995 for our x coordinate, and the y coordinate was negative 0 0.013. Next, for the synthesis of the mechanism, we needed to find the, the, the link lengths of R1, R2, R3, and R4 to make sure that we have a four-bar mechanism. To find that, we use these equations and plugged in, again, all the coordinates given to us by the positions. And we found that our R1, R2 were 14.98 and 19.99, respectively. For R3, we had to do it three times because we were given three different positions to make sure that all three of the position coordinates had the same length. And we found that they did. They all averaged to 44.99. And our R4 is 42. For lastly, we needed to use Grashoff's rule to make sure what, kind, what type of mechanism we had. And we found that using S plus L, which is the shortest link plus the longest link, is less than the two intermediate link sum. We found that we had a type one mechanism. And since the shortest link is at the bottom, that means that we have a double crank mechanism. So, so first, we had to model this to make sure that this, uh, that this matched all three positions. And using position one, we found that we had a crooked or a twisted mechanism, a mechanism as shown here. This mechanism did not follow all the other positions as depicted here for position two and for position three. That twisted mechanism would not create these two other positions. So we had an issue. So once we were looking at all the numbers, we try to how do you say, assume what the next number would be or what needed to be to make this correct. So we assume that for B1, the Y coordinate was actually negative 34 instead of the positive 34 that we were given in the beginning. To prove this, we use the position analysis. So for our models of position one, two, and three, we were able to get the theoretical theta one, theta two, theta three, and theta four. Using position equations, we're using theta one and theta two, which are all fixed. We were able to find and generate theta three and theta four. So the question is, does our theoretical angles match our experimental angles? These are our position analysis equations that we used. We plugged in our values and found several we found several from, because since we had to add from plus one or negative one for our inches, we went for about 60 to 62 different iterations, and we found that we were indeed correct about our assumption. As seen here, for position one with theta two equal to zero, we found that our angles given by the y coordinate 34 and the new y coordinate negative 34 had um, had errors that were less than 1%. Actually, our new assumption, which is the new coordinate, had even less of an error, which was exactly what we wanted. This is depicted in position two as well, and position three as well. All these percentages were less than error than the beginning that we started with. So for our real world application, we chose the train wheel since before we already had the train wheel chosen except this mechanism is actually very simple because our mechanism created was when the shorter link created a 360 turn completely, the outer ring actually made a 360 turn at the same time. Of course, this could be changed, but this is our application. As you can see, several rotations that this worked. In the next video,
you can see that this, this um, mechanism goes through all positions, position one, position two, and position three in order. Thank you so much for your time.